Hey, what's up everybody? So I just wanted to do this quick vlog to let you know what my experience so far has been with Xfinity Mobile. So I made another vlog about a week or so ago explaining why I decided to switch from T-Mobile to Xfinity Mobile and I ended up getting the Galaxy S9 Plus and that came in the mail on the 14th of March, the same day that Comcast said it would come. So that's one good thing. Um, but so far with this, you know, the reason why I decided to switch just to kind of reiterate real quick is because of the price. So right now with Xfinity Mobile for unlimited everything and the Galaxy S9 Plus paying month by month, I'm going to be paying about between 83 to 85 bucks a month for service as opposed to T-Mobile for the same thing. I was spending well over 100 bucks for that. So I'm saving some money with that. So the process of getting this all set up, you know, surprisingly, it went pretty well. I didn't really have a hard time at all. I wanted to port my number over from T-Mobile to Xfinity Mobile, and that was pretty easy too. Before the phone came, I got an email telling me that I could put my details in ahead of time to make the process move a little bit faster. So from that web page, I just had to enter some T-Mobile details, the account number, the PIN number that I set up with it, I think the last four digits of the social security number, probably some other really common verification information. And from there, they were like, all right, well, we got this. So when you get your phone, you can come back and you start to activate it. So when I got the phone, I went to the website. I didn't turn the phone on because you're not supposed to before you actually activate it and port your number. So you had to go to XfinityMobile.com slash activate. I think that was the website. And from there, it was pretty automated. You know, you started the porting process and they said, all right, this is going to take about 10 minutes. It was less than 10 minutes. I got an email saying that I was good to go. And then I was able to turn the phone on and went through all the regular steps that you do when you get a new phone, you know, sign into your accounts. You can uh, bring in data that you backed up or, you know, whatever you want to do. But the service was up and running pretty quickly. I didn't have to call anybody. I didn't have any errors, any problems. It went very, very smoothly. And I was really happy about that. So the way that Xfinity Mobile works is that they are partnered with Verizon Wireless, pretty much the biggest mobile phone carrier in the country as far as the depth and range that their signal can go out to. And uh, you use that network, but then you also have Comcast's wide, wide array of Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots. So basically, if you have internet service with Comcast and you have one of their Wi-Fi routers, you're most likely, whether you know it or not, are putting out a secondary Wi-Fi signal so that other Comcast customers can latch onto that and log into the network. Now, they got those all over the place, and I would imagine most people don't know that that's even what's happening with their router. But basically, when you have the Wi-Fi on, you either are going on uh, Verizon's network or you're bouncing between these Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots. Now, I just tried to see um, which hotspots I will be bouncing from while I was in the car at a stop sign or stoplight. And I only saw myself going on to one, but I couldn't keep checking, you know, because I'm driving. But I do keep it on just to see how things are going to be. Um, as far as speed goes, in my area, I do get LTE speeds from Verizon Wireless. On the status bar, it says LTE Plus, and the speeds are going to differ. So, you know, I don't really want to say, you know, what those speeds are are to kind of make you think that the speeds are super fast or they're super slow because it varies from area to area. Where I work, which is uh, in a more densely populated area where there's a lot of people closer to the core of the city, the speeds are gonna be a lot faster. Um, I think when I checked, I ended up getting maybe about 80 or so megabits per second down and about 36 up. But when I'm here at home, it's not quite as fast. It's about 40 down and maybe about seven to 10 up. But as far as you know, how that actually translates into using your phone on the network, the types of speeds that you get, are you waiting a long time for pages to load or are YouTube videos buffering? And no, no, not at all. It works just fine. But usually when I'm at home, I'm using the Wi-Fi network anyway, my own personal Wi-Fi network that's nothing to do with Comcast. And we got pretty good speeds. So everything pretty much works out well from that end. Uh, voice, as far as how does it sound when I'm talking on the phone, you know, like most people, I don't really do a whole lot of talking on the phone, but I did talk to my mom driving home from work. It was about a 40 minute drive. The Wi-Fi was on and I didn't have any problems talking to her. Uh, no dropped calls, had a pretty strong signal throughout the entire conversation. I took a little uh, trip to Toys R Us and went inside there. A lot more people are walking in now that they're closing. 
And uh, throughout that whole process, no problems at all. And another thing, at my job with T-Mobile, I usually had a really hard time nailing a signal inside the building. I would go from LTE to 4G, and sometimes I couldn't even do anything on the internet because the phone was struggling to find a signal. And then at the same time, it would really drain the battery trying to pull down that signal. And I would just try to check Twitter, and if I'm doing that for five minutes, I could feel my phone getting warm not the s9 my older phone the galaxy s7 edge and it would absolutely destroy the battery on that so i was hoping that with xfinity mobile and verizon's network that that would not be a problem and it has not been a problem i've been able to maintain my lte status even at work inside the buildings i haven't tried it with some uh, common dead zones that i've gone to in the past like certain walmarts and certain targets but i can imagine maybe the same thing will ring true for those stores as well. So, uh, so far, so far it's been so good. And now, granted, it's only been a few days. It's been less than a week, but uh, I'm happy with it so far. And like I said, the biggest deciding factor is why I wanted to switch was the price. So spending, you know, less than, um, than I was paying with T-Mobile, probably about 25 to $30 less than what I was paying for them. For the phone that I wanted, hey, you know, I don't like Comcast. I think they're a horrible company with garbage customer service, but you gotta give credit where credit is due in this Xfinity mobile service. Uh, definitely seems to be uh, a step in the right direction or at the very least, just a good service overall so far. So that is it. I'm gonna try to keep you updated on what's going on with Xfinity mobile, but if things continue to work out well, there may not be too much more to say. So uh, yeah, uh, down in the comments, if you have Xfinity Mobile, let me know what your experience has been with that. And if you're thinking about Xfinity Mobile and you have some questions, go ahead and put those in the comments as well. And uh, I'll try to answer them. And if I can't answer them, maybe someone else will answer them. You never know. So uh, that's it, guys. That's just my quick little update. And uh, by the way, I am recording this on the Galaxy S9 Plus. The lighting is not that good, but you know, it is what it is. So take care and I'll see you next time.